Good day, everybody. We're here today to discuss Lake Mead and where the water goes to. Why is it going down so fast? And is it going down quicker now than it has in the past? Well, basically, the answer to that is yes, because the lake is getting narrower. So right now I'm going to share with you the Lake Mead water database, the water summary. And the last reading was taken on August 30th of 22. And the reading is at 1044.29 feet. So the overall water loss at this point, 23.71 feet. So it has come back up from a month ago because we were at uh, one zero four zero point seven seven so it has increased a little bit from all the water intake from above with flash floods and rains what have you in the upper Colorado but anyhow I'm going to provide with you the actual printout that I took off the internet so you would be able to look for yourself to verify what I'm telling you is correct and also I'll tell you that also off the internet, I find that Lake Mead loses about 600 acre feet of water to evaporation every year. That's about six vertical feet per year. And Las Vegas Valley diverts around 450,000 acre feet of water annually for drinking, household needs, irrigation, parks, golf courses, and industrial uses. And they return about 40% of that water to Lake Mead as treated wastewater. So Southern Nevada is only allotted 300,000 acre feet annually and that number will be decreased as we as the lake keeps going down. So the next important thing to know is where does all the water go then? Because it, Lake Mead takes in 9 million acre feet which may seem like enough, but the Bureau of Reclamation is stipulated to send water downstream to Arizona, California, and a number of Native American tribes, and also include Mexico. If you like our content and you find it useful to you, please reach down there and smash that like and subscribe button for us, and ring the notification bell so you know of our new upcoming content, and please share it out as well. The next stop downstream as the water leaves Hoover Dam going to down the Colorado River, it goes to Davis Dam. This footage here was provided to me by a friend of mine. He has a YouTube channel. His name is Robert Mack in Asia. I'll provide a link in the description. Please also connect with him. He's got a really nice YouTube channel and he does a lot of travels to Vietnam and Thailand. Robert did a live stream from this location yesterday which was August 30th. Please check out his video. Go to the channel in the link below and check out this video. It's a nice video. Now I'd like to say that the reason I'm sharing on from this point is 21% of the water that leaves Lake Mead goes to California. And it gets there going from here, Davis Dam, down to Lake Havasu. And at Lake Havasu, there's a pump set up that will provide water to the California aqueduct. And I'm going to share that part of the video with you after we get to. Lake Havasu. I'd also like to state that although Lake Mead receives around 9 million acre feet of water annually, it releases 9.6 million acre feet. So it's already at a deficit to start with. So the overall loss to Lake Mead due to evaporation and over allotment is about 1.2 million acre feet of water a year, which is about 12 vertical feet. So California gets the largest share, which is 
four million acre feet. Arizona gets 2.8 million acre feet. And the country of Mexico gets 1.5 million acre feet. And Southern Nevada gets about 300,000 acre feet. Although, like I said, 450,000 gets pumped to Nevada, but they return 40% of that water as wastewater. Okay, at this point now, I'm gonna take you from Davis Dam to Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu is where the pump station is that pumps water to the California Aqueduct. Both Davis Dam and Lake Havasu are only down about three feet from their full pool. So there's also other dams below here that I'm going to share with you as well, below this area. Okay, from this point now I'm going to show you from Lake Havasu to where Alamo Dam is, and Alamo Dam leads down to the Colorado River, which also helps supply onward to Mexico and also portions to California. Now, as you'll see on these boat ramps here, this, I flew the drone over this about a year ago, and you see the positions they're in now. Now, look at this Google image of what it physically is now compared to what you see on the video from where I flew the drone a year ago. It's gone down considerably just as Lake Mead has. Here I'm just going to share with you what the actual depth loss is compared to the past. Okay, In this video it shows you the rough location of where the pump station is. I'll provide a picture of what the pump of Witset intake pump plant looks like. and follow it down to the Julian Hines pump plant. I'll provide a picture of that as well. That comes on to Lake Matthews. Then from Lake Matthews, it goes through pump stations to get it up to Morris Dam. And it's in the San Gabriel mountain range. I'll include a Google image of that as well. So the water is being provided through pump stations, aqueducts, and what have you to Southern California for drinking water. Okay, from this point now I'm going to take you down south on the Colorado River to where Painted Rock Dam ties into it. And as you can see in the picture here in 1993, Painted Rock Dam was the largest lake in the state of Nevada. Just look at the immense size of it. And I'm going to show you a drone flight I did on it last year in its condition now. And it's been that way for many years. And I'm hoping this isn't going to be the outcome for Lake Mead. It's quite sad. From here now, the Colorado River completes its journey into the Gulf of California, which divides Baja California from Mexico. This is where the final remaining portion of water finishes. If you made it this far in the video, we appreciate you. Reach down there and smash that like and subscribe. We'd much appreciate it. Thank you very much.